Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit now about how to set up Blackboard Collaborate sessions on a Moodle site, as well as using Blackboard Collaborate, recording sessions, accessing those um, recordings later and making them available to students. So when you get onto your Moodle site, most of the time the Blackboard Collaborate link is going to be rolled over from a previous iteration of the course. And if that's the case, then you don't need to add another link. However, if you don't have a Blackboard Collaborate link, you will need to add one. And the way to do that is to make sure that you've got editing turned on. And then when you have editing turned on, we can add an activity or a resource. What we're going to look for is this purple Collaborate Ultra link. Click on that. First thing we want to do is give the activity a name. So let's just call it Blackboard Collaborate Sessions. And we might want to either show on course page or hide from students if we, um, for example, if students are already enrolled in the course and you don't want them to access the page yet. However, we'll just leave it unhidden for now. We can also write a description on the course page and display that description. So you might just want to make it, you know, a sentence or two um, for, for the description. Okay, most of this other stuff is not necessary. You might want to restrict access to different groups on Moodle, but I'm not going to go through that now. So we're just going to leave it as this. So once we've done this, we just save and return to course. That's all you need to do. Okay, so here is our live Blackboard Collaborate link. Now, when I click on this Blackboard Collaborate Sessions link, it's going to take me to the Blackboard Collaborate course room for the Moodle site. We can see that it is unlocked and available, which means that any student enrolled in the Moodle site is going to be able to click on the link and access all of the sessions in the course room. Now, if you only want certain groups of students to access sessions um, on Blackboard Collaborate, you're not able to restrict access to certain sessions on, um, on Blackboard Collaborate. You can make groups in Moodle, but when students click on the link and go to the course room, then they're just going to be able to see all of the sessions. So that's one of the limitations. So you can see here that I don't actually have any sessions created at the moment, so I am going to create some sessions. So let's go ahead and do that. I will create a session and I'm just going to call the session Collaborate. Okay. And you might want to call it something a bit more useful than that. All right, so then we have a few things here. We have guest access. Now, students that are accessing the Collaborate sessions that are enrolled in your Moodle course, you don't need to um, check guest access because they'll be able to access the session. If you want students from other courses to that are not enrolled in your Moodle site to be able to access the sessions, then you might need to click guest access. And what that does is it generates a guest link such that students clicking on that link will not come to the course room. They'll go directly to the session that we're creating now and they will jump in as a participant. So um, I will show you what that looks like later, but that's essentially what that is. Okay, so that's what the guest access is. If we go down to the start time and finish, I am going to make this start at say 11.05 on a Monday and it's going to go to 12.05. Actually, it'll go, let's make it go to 11.55. Okay. So I've got a session that runs from 11.05 through to 11.55 every Monday. So I can either make this um, an open session with no end, which is fine if you want to do a test session, but it's not really applicable here if we want to actually schedule a session. We can also repeat the session. So I might have this session repeating weekly, every week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I can, so then that's how I set that up. 
or if it's just done every Monday, you can just repeat weekly or you, every two weeks or whatever, however you want to do it. You can repeat daily if you want. So this is how you make it do it over a certain number of days. You can also end after a certain number of occurrences. Each one of these days counts as an occurrence. So for one week, you're going to have three occurrences in this case. But if I just wanted this to run for three weeks, for example, I might just put nine occurrences or I might end this on a specific date. Now, if I want it to run for three weeks, let's make it finish on Friday, the 12th of March. OK, so that's how we set up the session, the repeat sessions. We also have um, early entry. We can allow either no early entry or 15, 30, 45 or 60 minutes before the session starts. Now, that means that students are not actually going to be able to access the session before, like for longer than 15 minutes beforehand and you are not going to be able to access the session um, for more than 15 minutes before the session start time starts and that is going to become useful in a second so that's the early entry um, default attendee role is participant for students um, for instructors, which includes tutors on Moodle, they will go in as moderators, which means they can do um, a little bit more like set up polling, set up, um, uh, we can set up um, uh, breakout groups and all that sort of thing. We also want to allow recording downloads, which is useful for um, students who might be accessing from overseas and their connection's a little bit dodgy. Instead of streaming the recordings, they might want to download them. We can all also make the chat anonymous. Um, moderator permissions. Um, yeah, that's there's not much there. Participant permissions. We want them to be able to share audio, video, post chat messages and draw on the whiteboard and files, which I'll go into in a second. We also can enable session telephony, which means that um, if your audio is bad, you can actually dial in with your mobile phone to, to run your audio for the session through a mobile phone, um, which is sort of useful. Um, there's private chats, large sessions, large sessions if you think you're going to have more than 250 participants and profanity. Anyway, so that is the session settings. We've got event details. Let's actually create the session. OK, so you can see now that I've saved the session, I actually have a guest link. So what I can do straight away with that guest link is go back to my Moodle site. You wouldn't post it on the same Moodle site. You'd post it on the Moodle site that you want the students from the other course to access from. But I'm just going to call this guest link or collaborate. I'm going to do my guest link URL. Remember, that doesn't take me to the course room. It takes me just to the session. So I can Oh, for appearance, what we want to do is we want to make this into a new window. It just looks a bit better. OK, so let's save and return to course. Now you can see that if students click on this guest link before the 15 minutes comes up. So remember, I said it was 11.05. We've still got a minute before we hit the 15 minutes prior for early entry. So if guests click on that, it says no active occurrences. So they can't actually join prior to that. So when we go back to our course room, we can see that we've got a bunch of recurring sessions. If I click on that, all of the sessions will pop up underneath um, this part here. Now in just over 30 seconds, we're going to hit that 15 minute early entry window. But, but because I'm already in the course room, that 15 minutes will tick over and this will not highlight such that it is in session because you can see here that these are all not yet started. However, these will be in progress when the 15 minutes comes up, but I can't just refresh the course room because then Blackboard Collaborate will want me to re-log back into Blackboard Collaborate, which you don't need to do. You just need to re-access. Um, you just need to close down the tab and then reopen it from the Moodle page. So I'll show you what happens. So this is what happens. You need to re-log back in. So instead of doing that, just close down the tab and get back into Blackboard Collaborate. And now you can see that this first session is in progress. 
we can also see that if we click on the guest link, it's joining the Collaborate session and I can type my name to join the session as a guest. So if you go to access the Collaborate session and you're coming up against this and you need to type your name to join this session as a guest, you've clicked on the wrong link because you need to access through the course room so that you have moderator access. So that's what that looks like. So let's actually go into this session now. We click on it and then we just click join session. Now, a little pop-up will occur. You need to allow your microphone and you need to allow um, the screen sharing and stuff like that. Okay, so now that we've allowed everything, this is what it looks like. We can turn on our audio and our video. This little status thing here just says, you know, what's your connection like and that sort of thing. So I will share my video. When I go share video, you can see that a preview actually pops up so I can click share video great so there I am down in the bottom left hand corner okay so what can we actually do well if you are having a little bit of dodgy audio if you want to change the um, the audio or the video input settings you just go down to the bottom right and click open collaborate panel we've got a few things pop up here um, we've uh, but, but what I'm going to do first is let's jump over to the settings, my settings. And if you've got dodgy audio in video, you just click on this, um, go over to settings, click on set up your camera and microphone. So here you can see I've got the MacBook Pro microphone and it, the audio is working great. So I go yes. And then here I'm on, um, this is a video preview. So I can, if I had a different webcam, I could choose a different camera setting. So I go, yes, video is working, but now I need to reshare my audio and video if I was sharing them before. So let's reshare my video. Okay, so that's what that is. Um, if you've got students that are in the room and they're starting to um, type in the chat and you find the audio notification really annoying, you can turn that off. So when someone's joined or left the breakout group or session, you can have a pop up if you want or no. If someone posts a chat message, you can have an audio notification pop up, browser pop up or no. So yeah, this is where all those settings are, notification settings. And then session settings, this isn't super important because we said we wanted participants to be able to do all of this. Great, so that's what that is. Let's go back to the chat, which is what popped up when we first opened up the Collaborate panel. And there are chat messages here. You can see you're in the chat room with everyone. So when you type here, this is probably where students are going to be contacting us through here. So if we go back to um, the previous panel, though, you might have, say, you and a couple of tutors in the Collaborate session, and you just want to talk to other moderators. So here you can talk to other moderators, but then to go back to everyone, to talk to the students, you just go back here. To work out the participants or the attendees that are, that are in the session, you just go one over to the right to this little people icon, and this will be your attendees. The little black number is going to show you how many people are in the session. It's just me at the moment. And you can change the attendee control. So if you had a participant in the session that you wanted to make them a moderator, you could click on that and make them a moderator. Okay, so that is the attendees. We can also share content, which is kind of the, the most important thing. But before I do that, I'm actually going to go back and start recording this now. So you can either start recording by clicking on this button up here, which if you might have accidentally gotten rid of that and you might think, what? how do I start recording now? Top left hand corner, open session menu, start recording. Oh, by the way, this is also how you use your phone for audio. You can either do it through here or through the my settings previously, and it'll give you a number that you just dial in. Okay, let's start recording. The session's now being recorded. Okay, so let's, there's a few different things that we can do um, for sharing content. So all of this sort of stuff we can set up because we are moderators. However, if we want the students to be able to um, like write on whiteboards and stuff with us, we can share a blank whiteboard. To start drawing on the whiteboard, we just select the pencil. We can also select a different color. So 
go back, keep selecting different colors and keep drawing on the whiteboard in this way. And students can draw on it as well, which is really cool. We can also type in text. Uh, we can also do different shapes, which is kind of useful. Um, so if you want to point to something on the whiteboard, you can't just point with your mouse, you need to point with the pointer. This is how students can see where you're pointing. If you want to delete a specific thing that you have um, drawn, you need to select the select tool up here and then highlight something. Say, for example, I want to get rid of this line and then just hit delete on your keyboard. If you want to get rid of everything on the whiteboard, you just hit the clear button and that gets rid of everything and you can't get it back once you've deleted it. So be very sure if you want to clear it. So that's how you share a blank whiteboard. Uh, if you want to just stop sharing, you can either click the stop sharing button or you can just move on to sharing something else. I'm going to click stop sharing. There's a couple other things we can do. We can share an application or a screen. So you, if you click on that, a little pop up will occur. Now, if you're using Safari, it doesn't work. You can't share screen or application. However, or you can only share screen. You can't share applications, whereas on other browsers, you can share um, screens or applications. So that's how you do that. You need to make sure that you've allowed pop ups, though. So that's that. Um, and then the next thing is we also can share camera. We can share files. I'll go back to that in a second. Next, we can do polling. So if you want to ask the students a question, you can't do these in advance. You have to do it while you're in Collaborate. Um, so you might want to create a quick poll and you might want to have had these prepared earlier and then just copy and paste them in. You can add different choices. You can delete choices. Um, so then once you've done that, you just click start and then it pops up. So you can lock the poll once you don't want any more people to respond. Um, and then you can, if we, uh, that's how you sort of get rid of it and open it back up. And then you can also end the poll. So that's how you do that. Then you just end the poll and there. You can't get your question back. So that's how that works. You can also put the students into breakout groups. You can allow attendees to switch between groups and you can assign people groups. So um, you can, for example, I can assign myself to one of these groups. I can delete a group. I can add a different group, etc., etc. Um, I should say too, this is the main room. So this is where everyone pops in, like where I am now. And then you put them into different breakout groups. Okay, sharing files. We can share multiple files, which I will upload a couple of files now. Okay, so I'm just going to drag and drop. Well, you can either click add files and select them, but I'm just going to drag and drop them. And you can see they're converting into something usable. And it's useful to do all this before you, um, before, like in the 15 minutes for early entry. Okay, so now we can remove the file or rename the file, and then we can just select that file and click share now. Once you've done that, you can click on the page that you actually want to share and then it'll pop up. You can then go ahead and do things like draw on it and students can draw on it as well. However, when you change slides and then come back, the drawing is gone. So make sure if you're writing answers that everyone knows um, what you were just doing. Now, if you're wanting to change which file you're sharing, you just go back to the share content, click to the previous panel, click on this, and then click share now. Remembering that you have to click on the um, slide that you want to share. Go back, and then if you want to stop sharing completely, you just click stop sharing file. And that's how that works. Now these, because these are uploaded, this is how um, they're going to stay there. And if you had multiple breakout groups, you could upload different files to them too. But these are going to stay there even when you go out of share files. And then they still are. Okay, so that's sharing content. 
I'm going to close the Collaborate panel now because let's stop this recording. Top left hand corner, open session menu, stop recording. Okay, recording has stopped. Now to exit the session, I just click on the session menu and then I just leave session. If you have something that you want to say about the audio and video, you can submit and exit, otherwise you just skip that. Okay. So then we're back in the course room. Now this is this session that's happening. To access the recordings, top left hand corner, and then I click on recordings. We can see here that it is uh, currently processing, so it's just working out what, um, what to do with that. And then once it's finished processing, we can actually look at making that available, not just to our students, but to students from other courses. Okay, so now that that's finished, any student in our course that's enrolled in, the, in our Moodle course can access these recordings. The way that they do that is when they jump into the course room, which is going to look very similar to this, top left hand corner, recordings, and they will see it there. The only difference being that they won't have all of these options. They'll only be able to watch now or download, because remember, we did allow recording downloads. There's a few things here. We can change the recording settings, so that means we can change the name. Uh, we'll just call it Collaborate Session. And importantly, we can allow public access. So let's go save. You can see here that the access has been changed to public. And then if we open up the recording options again, we can copy the link. Now that we've done that, in the Moodle site of the students that aren't enrolled in our course, we can add a URL. And remember, for appearance, we want to open it up in a new window and then save and return to course. OK, so there's our recording. And then if I click on it, new window means it opens it up in a new tab. It's loading the recording. So students that aren't in our course will be able to download the recording by going opening recording menu and then downloading the recording that way. So if I click play, you can see here that's all good and that's that's the recording so then we can just close that and that is how we work blackboard collaborate ultra